Alright, Mr. Palmer here with the second video for GCSE Computing on Networks. Alright, before you watch this one, make sure you go over your notes on network architecture, network topologies, and transmission media or network media. Okay, that was the wireless and wired media that you could use for network. Alright, so this one's about network components. Um, there are a number of different things I'm going to talk about in here. I'm going to try and model it by building a network for you. Okay. But the idea is basically you should be able to think about the different kind of network components that you have available and your topologies and the architectures that you've learned about and basically construct a network designed uh, network design based on a given scenario. All right. So uh, this obviously, if you watch Batman, this is the Black Mask. OK, the Black Mask being a gangster that's trying to take over Gotham City. OK, so we're going to work with the Black Mask in his skyscraper, Okay, suitably gothic skyscraper. Um, so he's got his executive office on one floor and he's got a floor underneath that for his regular uh, crew and then uh, he's got an underground team of hackers in a separate secret location and he needs to set up some kind of network infrastructure for uh, this network uh, for, for you know his uh, team to, to work on his criminal activities okay so uh, the first kind of component he's probably going to need is an NIC okay a network interface controller or a network interface card uh, there's another acronym as well for it. I can't quite remember off the top of my head um, But Anyway, uh, what does a network interface card do? It's obviously it's a piece of hardware All right, it connects the computer to the network Obviously if it's a wired network then the network card like in the top uh, image is going to physically connect the computer to the network All right um, it basically uh, transmits and receives signals from the carrier medium. Carrier medium being copper cable, fiber optic, okay, microwave, radio waves. You should know what microwaves and radio waves are for, by the way, if you made notes on the previous video. Right now, I'm, uh, obviously the, the the black mask is going to have a network interface card in all of the, his um, devices so that they can all connect to his network. So the next thing is a terminator, okay? A terminator basically, uh, if you look at this uh, model of a network, you should look at it and be like, yeah, I know what that is. That is a bus network. A terminator basically sits at the end, either end of the cable, right? The either end of the data bus. And what it does is, um, if I can remember correctly, there's some resistors inside and it basically uh, degrades the signal and stops it from bouncing back out um, and down the cable again to prevent data collisions all right um, now if we think about the advantages of a bus topology well basically I really don't think that this criminal mastermind is going to be using a terminator in his network so let's move on okay to the next networking component all right, so the next thing over here now is a repeater. Remember what attenuation is, right? When you've got uh, signals being transmitted on a medium, they lose integrity. So the signal degrades, okay? Remember, it could be electromagnetic interference. Um, it just could be uh, distance. Remember with Wi-Fi, uh, there's, a, there's like about a 20 meter odd radius and after which, you know, basically you lose the signal because there's not enough energy to keep pushing the wave on, all right? And so we got over here a wired network, for example, two machines connected up. There's a 100 meter run of cable or 200 meter run of cable. And basically that's just too far. The signal can't travel that far on a copper wire. So therefore we can put a repeater in the middle. The repeater basically cleans the message up and then sends it on to the next segment of the network. Yeah, segment being piece. So now our network is divided into two pieces. We've got the first piece and then we've got a repeater, which then broadcast the message on to the next segment um, obviously with Wi-Fi you can have a wireless repeater as well so if we think about the black masks uh, little setup okay on the left hand side you've got his floor with his team on it and on the right hand side if you've seen the Batman uh, under the red hood that's the one I'm modeling my little thing on he's got like a whole floor empty just with his office in it all right and so basically from the servers, okay, you've got all the cabling running up alongside the lift shaft. Well, that's a long run, okay, on both sides, uh, on both floors, sorry. So there obviously needs to be a repeater in the middle, which will clean and then rebroadcast the signal onto the next segment. Now, the next networking component we can look at over here is a hub, all right? A hub is basically a repeater 
which has a large number of output ports. All right. What that means is um, the signal comes in, it boosts it, and it sends it on to all the connected devices. Well, if you think about it, what's going to happen, the network is going to slow down because the same message is being broadcasted all of the time to all of the devices. If you've got 10, 100 megabit network and you've got 10 devices connected in, each, each um, device is effectively getting about 10 megabits because every single piece of data is being rebroadcast to all 10 devices. All right. If you want to see that in the diagram, if machine A is trying to send G a message, it's going to send that message into the hub, but the hub is going to send that same message back out to all six computers connected to it. Uh, bright sparks among you might think straight away, hang on a second, there's a bit of a security issue with this. All right. In general, all right, the the message will only be um, uh, processed by the machine that set uh, that has the address. Okay, a matching address, and the other machines will ignore it. That's not to say that someone can't sit there and um, use a piece of software to access all of the data packets that are being sent and to read it all. All right. So there's this bit of a security issue with that. Um, I'm not sure that. Um, a hub would be a good idea to use on that floor on the left hand side with all of the hackers sitting there because you don't you might not necessarily want them all to be looking at what everybody else is doing on the network now a bridge is um, a device basically sorry I had a bit of a brain freeze here right a bridge is a device connects two different network segments alright so you've got uh, a segment maybe down on one floor or one one section you've got another network segment on the other side of the bridge okay and a bridge basically spans those two segments what it does is right with if a machine is trying to send uh, uh, a message over and it, the, the message goes to the bridge the bridge checks it against its list and it sees okay hang on a minute if that message is um, on one list on my side then I don't need uh, to um, uh, broadcast it onto the next segment because it's on the the bottom side so I'm just going to leave it down there I'm going to assume that the recipient has received the message and I'm just going to I'm going to ignore it I'm going to delete it okay whereas if it receives a message and the address on it is not on its list okay then it's going to go you know what this is for the other side and it just basically pushes that message on to the next segment so the bridge would be pretty good okay for the black mask because now you can see in the middle he's got team A on one side he's got team B on the other side and he can stop them from um, basically uh, looking um, at each other's um, messages when they're being uh, broadcast around the network perhaps all right it will also reduce data traffic by not having so much data basically bouncing around the network now the next bit uh, next device we're going to look at is a switch you can this is the back of a switch all right um it's got all these uh well the front of a switch i should say it's got loads of um cables connected in them and what they do is they basically create circuits and allow um networking devices to talk to each other all right uh, this is a very neat looking switch most switches are very very messy okay you can imagine in a in an organization which has a thousand computers you're going to have a thousand ports with wires going everywhere all right a switch basically is a high-speed bridge so it has its own CPU built into it that allows it to do the switching quite quickly all right it basically can create network segments so it can allow two computers to create a connection between themselves and then therefore send the data along that newly created um, connection that newly created bridge between those two direct segments what this does basically is it reduces the traffic because data is sent to the specific segment that it's destined for. All right, it's not basically broadcast the whole across the whole network. So if we compare that to the example of the hub, if A is going to send G a message and there's a switch in the middle, C, D, E, and F are also connected to the same network, but they don't receive the message. The switch creates a direct bridge, okay, between uh, the connection for A, the port for A, and the port for G. And so the data travels along that little bridge, okay, and it goes straight to directly to G. So a switch, you can see, is much, much uh, better for a hub, better, better for a network than a hub because it's reducing the amount of data traffic. So I think 
um, for the black mask and the network I'm designing for him, a hub is a pretty good idea. Sorry, a hub could be used to join team A and team B. I want to start this whole thing again. I could use a hub to join up team A and team B, but it's going to slow down my network, all right? Because the data that's on each segment, all right, the, the team A segment, and the team B segment, is going to be repeated three times, all right? It's being rebroadcast out to everybody on all output ports. It'd be far better if I use a switch instead, because basically then, all right, uh, there's less data throughput going through the network because the switch is making a direct connection and creating a circuit between the two computers that are sending and receiving data. Obviously, if my servers are connected to the network, then my servers also need to be connected to a switch. All right. Um, you may notice that uh, my servers also probably need to be connected to the two switches as well. Um, which I've forgotten to draw in on my little diagram. Let me get a let me get a pen up, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. That this my servers from here, there should be a, a connection to here, and there should also be a connection to here. All right. Uh, obviously, I don't need to have the second connection. I could just use the first one because it would come from here, go to this switch, it will broadcast onto the bridge, which should check the MAC address, and go. You know what? It's not on this list down here. Let me forward it on up the chain of up the chain onto the next segment. However, what happens if this connection gets broken? Then no one can communicate with the servers. So by allowing a second connection to the other switch, we have um, a form of redundancy built into the network. All right, this makes our system more reliable in the long term. Right, a router. Right, basically allows independent network segments to send data to each other. Independent network segments means that they work by themselves. They're set up differently. Okay, like for example, at home you have an independent network, right? Peer-to-peer -peer architecture in your home with your bits and pieces. You want to connect to another network in order to, for example, browse the web, send email, watch videos, etc., etc. So you have a router in the middle of two networks. It routes the packets between the network, right? So it sends them um, back and forth, okay? Um, it allows, basically, um, independent setups. So it doesn't matter how your network is set up. On one side or the other side, the router is designed to allow uh, them to, to, um, to share data, okay? Obviously, um, the the black mask wants to get on the internet i mean his hackers are hacking away isn't it and he's got his team of top secret people hidden somewhere else so he's going to have an isp that allows him to connect to the world uh, wide web to the internet uh, to other wans and so on and so forth that are out there so he's going to need a router in his organization which is connected to one of his servers okay and that router will then allow his internal network which has one particular setup to talk to another network outside which has its own setup okay so i've just been for a whole bunch of different networking components you hopefully you've been making your notes and so your task now is this uh, i've given you um uh, that a3 ha uh, worksheet okay uh, based on uh, and i've given you um, a brief for a network and you need to think about the different networking components that we've talked about and the different servers and that we've learned about in uh, class and you need to create a network design based upon that given scenario all right thank you very much and i'll see you with your network designs